As the Taliban consolidates its grip on Kabul, Amnesty International accuses Taliban forces of torturing and killing nine men from Afghanistan's Hazara minority last month. Let's stick with that story because one of Amnesty International, uh, the report's authors, Brian Kastner, joins me from New York right now. Uh, Brian Kastner, tell me more about what you discovered. You were in Afghanistan until very recently. So give me the detail on this report. Sure, thank you for having me. So we uncovered a massacre, like you say, of nine Hazara men uh, in a tiny little village in Malistan, which is a Hazara dominated area uh, in Ghazni province. And of course, there's a lot of focus now on Kabul uh, and how the Taliban took it over. But of course, for months before this, uh, there were many other dominoes falling. And as the Taliban would take over rural districts or smaller cities and then the provincial capitals, um, you know, they would often cut cell phone service in parts of these areas. So it's very difficult to know what's happening. But we managed to speak to eyewitnesses, uh, people who buried the victims, and are able to be sure that in just this one tiny little hamlet, 30, uh, 30 houses, 40 men total, Those out of those 40 men, nine ended up dead uh, through torture and execution uh, in the beginning of July. Now, Amnesty International's chief, Agnes Kalamar, has said this. It's a reminder of Taliban, the Taliban's past record, a horrifying indicator of what the Taliban rule may bring, especially for religious and ethnic minorities. Uh, is there evidence, as you talk to colleagues in your own group and other NGOs, uh, that this level of brutality and violence is being echoed in other parts of Afghanistan? Well, I think the challenge is in many places we don't know. And in the few places we do, um, you know, there have been credible reports of massacres in Spin Boldock. Uh, there's, of course, reports of uh, Taliban going house to house in, in some of the other smaller areas and, and now also Kabul. Um, and so there's a real disconnect between what, uh, what we see, what the Taliban are allowing to be released in some of these smaller cities. There's a lot of uh, the only videos coming out of them are uh, you know, being released by Taliban-friendly social media. There's a disconnect between that and what is likely happening. Uh, now, and this is true we, in Kabul as well. We, we, we should, of course, uh, also remind ourselves that the Taliban spokesman who gave that extraordinary press conference in Kabul just a couple of days ago, he, he said that uh, the Taliban was going to offer amnesty and forgiveness to all, including those who had worked with the government and with foreign forces. Yeah, so there, I mean, there's just such a disconnect between what a spokesman or a leader might say and what an 18 year old with a Kalashnikov is going to do. And we see this even in Kabul, where spokespeople for the Taliban say we're helping to get people out. Uh, it's OK if people go out. And then I know I have friends, colleagues, uh, contacts I know Americans who have tried to make it to the airport and get turned aside by Taliban checkpoints within Kabul, and the Taliban there are saying, no, you need permission from the government to leave. So it's, uh, you know, it's just really inconsistent across the board. And, and so you end up with a situation where why bother having aircraft coming to the airport if nobody can actually get there? and just, you know, a real chaotic and bedlam situation. And talking of the airport, bedlam and chaos, Brian, tell me how, how you got out of the country, because you're very recently arrived in New York and we've seen all of the pictures of the mayhem at the airport. What happened to you? So we tried to leave on Sunday when it was clear that the Taliban were going to be taking the city. I and uh, some Afghan colleagues went to the airport early. Uh, but on Sunday evening, uh, we got reports both from State Department and also contacts I had, uh, and then also people within the airport saying the Taliban had entered the civilian side. And so we and a number of other people uh, ended up fleeing across the active runway uh, to the military side under gunfire. Um, and people got separated. Uh, a couple that were Americans got pulled in. A couple that, um, you know, a majority of the Afghans got pushed out. Um, and it was, you know, extremely challenging. It was the very beginning uh, of all of this. I'm lucky to have gotten out on Monday, and we've been working hard uh, to get everybody else out since. Well, Brian Kastner, newly arrived in New York. We thank you very much for joining us on BBC World News. Thank you. Thank you.